Good day, everyone. How are you? How are you doing? I hope you're enjoying uh, the session. I see some uh, heads knowing a really interesting uh, presentation by Carlos. Thank you very much. My name is Emmanuel, and today I'm going to talk about um, um, aging playfully in the city. And I'm going to end uh, with a call to action for everyone. Um, a few years back, um, I had uh, the genuine pleasure to actually be giving a public talk um, in a senior citizens um, community center in Malaysia. Right at the end um, of the talk, uh, a gentleman approached me. And he was a bit odd because he looked so much younger. Um, so I had to ask, um, how come you're, you're part of this group? His name was uh, Mr. Tan. And um, actually, he revealed that he was 85 years old. But if you looked at him and his youthful swagger, his physical movements, you would swear he was much, much younger. Um, so I had to ask, I said, you know, what is your secret? He said, I'll tell you, but you have to buy lunch. So we went for lunch and I asked again the question. And he very kindly revealed um, a lot of things, but he mentioned that his main secret was this. He said, I have never stopped playing. And this is true. Um, actually, play is so fundamental for the human development. If um, you have children, grandchildren, or if you've um, got relatives that have children, and you notice the way they play and way, way, way we play when we're young is actually how we understand the world around us. It's how we develop our muscles, so we start to move. It's how we socialize, how we get into relationships. But unfortunately, the, as we grow older, we tend to replace that playful mindset um, with, with a different one. And in fact, we don't stop playing. We, we um, restrict ourselves from playing. And as um, Bernard Shaw mentioned, actually we don't grow old um, because um, we stop playing. Um, we, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And this is very important. And in fact, there is currently a wealth of evidence showing the importance of playing playfulness and in aging well, and especially in increasing a motivation for movement um, and exercise. But before going there, I think it's very important um, to look into you know, the relationship between brain development and movement. And to do that, um, I think we need to talk a bit about the brain. So think of the brain uh, as a collection of thousands, hundred thousands of towns and cities um, that they, they come together. Um, actually, it's very similar to what you see right in the center of your screen. This is called the neuron. And these guys, they're basically responsible for capturing sensory information from the external environment, but also sending um, motor um, um, signals to the different muscles, so basically they're responsible about the movement. Now, like in the real world, um, uh, these neurons, the towns and the cities, they need to be connected somehow with each other. In the real world, we have different infrastructure, roads, railways, and so on. Um, in the brain, basically, this is through the neural pathways. Um, again, you see those in the screen. And um, these guys, they, they help connect um, the neurons together. Now, why this is important is because with those connections, the signal information can transfer fast. And the more of these neurons you have, is like the more roads uh, and more physical infrastructure you have between towns and cities, then the more products and, and people can freely move in. Um, the importance of these neural pathways to the movement is because each time we move, and especially each time we move in a consistent way, it's like building uh, a new road, or it's like reinforcing a, a motorway from a two to a three lanes. Um, and the importance for that is that as we grow, um, and we know that actually we can build more neural pathways as we grow, um, it protects us um, cognitively, uh, but also is ensure we can be more mobile and more able um, through um, our later years. So going into the environment, we mainly live the cities, the vast majority of us. Do our cities help us grow old or grow young? 
And I'd like to ask you to explode together with me through a number of visuals, some examples of that. I think what is abundantly clear by looking at some of these images is that actually our cities currently are not doing a great job of that. Uh, they, they, t they tend to favor more, um, more lazy ways or different ways of movement and in situations where obviously um, people can use natural movement are very, very restricted, as you can see. Uh, sometimes also the infrastructure we design in urban spaces, such as the image on the uh, bottom right, um, actually they encourage more sedentary behaviors. You can see there everyone is taking the uh, escalators and very few people, I think only one person actually, is taking the stairs. Um, and uh, in fact, this becomes even more challenging uh, as we grow older um, and it creates less opportunity um, for, for senior citizens actually uh, to move about uh, into the city. Um, so can we encourage um, more play and movement? Actually, to ask it a bit better, can we encourage more movement via play? I guess that is the question. And the answer is, there are some examples that demonstrate we can actually do. Uh, there are examples that show actually we can gamify aspects of our cities. Um, and we have here um, just a few uh, examples. You can see on the top of the left corner, this is actually the rooftop of um, a public car park in Denmark. And what is important about that, um, this is not just for children, this is for adults, uh, and it encourages intergenerational play. Um, if you are in north of Italy and you're sitting in a bench, you can do a bit of yoga and you can stretch yourself, uh, as you see in the uh, bottom uh, left image. Or if you're in the US, um, you know, you can exhibit your basketball skills uh, when throwing the rubbish. Uh, but I'd like to say there's three plus one ways we can gamify our cities and win some more play uh, back into them. First of all, there's a lot that we can do with um, the street furniture. And we've got examples on the top uh, right and top left where you can see that even benches that, that they tend to be very sedentary in terms of the uh, behaviors, they can be turned into instruments where and anyone, even people seated, can actually um, move a bit. And actually there's great ways of socializing and meeting new people. Um, of course, there's other ways, um, such as the exams on the bottom left and right, where actually you can see on one hand um, street furniture converted into swings. Uh, one is in a park uh, in the US, uh, the one on the right is actually a bus stop in the city center of Montreal in Canada. Uh, and of course, there is other examples of um, seasonal uh, street furniture that can be brought uh, into the city. Uh, public spaces um, uh, is another way, and this can be done by very cheap uh, augmentation of, of, of some of the um, um, existing um, infrastructure we have in the city center, um, making some of uh, the infrastructure a bit more playful, whether it is engaging uh, with a virtual wall or uh, getting for free a tennis ball, why not? Uh, but actually there are some examples, and these are my favorite on the right-hand side of, as you can see, um, changing the urban fabric, uh, where you can add a slider, or in the case of the bottom right, uh, is actually a park designed in China specifically for adults to be able to play, and again engage with um, people from other ages. Also, playfulness can be uh, included into uh, mobility as well, and this is an example from a project where we work with senior citizens in Malaysia to develop um, some, um, some creative ideas. And of course, we have urban parks um, that we can use not only to bring food into the cities, uh, but also to grow. And again, there's a lot of examples around that. Um, it is uh, abundantly clear that we all um, either have lead or will be actually growing within a city, and we're faced with a challenge and opportunity. And that is, 
how do we embed more movement, um, more natural movement, so that we can move more and grow well? I hope I have demonstrated um, that we can do that by designing more play in the city. And my call to action will be, um, like Mr. Tan, um, let's reclaim um, our right to play. Thank you very much. <laughs>